وخلق الجان من مارج من نار and he created the jinn from a flame of fire fire and the symbolism associated with it has been with us since times immemorial fire regardless if you believe or not in religion or science has been with humanity for its beginning and beyond as our ancestors learned to harness its power Indeed, fire might even be considered the universal tool of humanity, as every culture has used it, and due to its ambiguous nature, fire as a symbol has represented numerous things in various cultures uncountable, maybe even in every culture, as it is, as I've said before, a universal tool of humanity, as it is a tool of humanity. We use to bend nature to our will. It becomes a tool of order. And as a symbol for creation and molding of the world. As we use fire to extract and form metals. Fire helps us see at night and control our surroundings. Again, it is, becomes a tool for imposing order against chaos. The chaos of nature. Flame of order that keeps the beast away. But fire, of course, also symbolizes chaos and destruction in certain contexts. After all, the flame can be hard to control. Just like our emotions, our passions, just like the flame leaps, dances and spreads with reckless abandon, it connects to how our emotions work, our passions and desires take us on wild rides and dances with us, without our own control. Now a very psychological reason to explain why we associate fire with emotion is that a lot of people when experiencing passions such as lust or anger also experience a rise in body temperature and fire is a symbol for heat and thus there exists that connection. But what I think is the true nature of why we associate fire with passions is due to them both being the potential source of great destruction. We can see how rage and flame can cause great destruction. Anger, like the flame, is often indiscriminate and often destructive, like a flame out of control. But even desire and love, if but a spark of it can, like the flame, cause great destruction when it grows into something beyond control. Fire is used in Romeo and Juliet to symbolize the passion Romeo and Juliet feel for one another. For example, in the first act and in the first scene, Shakespeare metaphorically refers to a fire sparkling in the lover's eyes. Fire is here a symbol of passion, but it's also used as an omen for what is to come, as the spark of flame of passion will lit the fires of destruction in the story, causing great tragedy. Fire as a symbol for passion, chaos and destruction is well known. But it can also be a symbol for remembering the past, as people remember the past when they sit before the open flame contemplating what has happened in the past and reflecting upon life in the fire. Fire represents an eternity for the metaphor of the eternal flame. So long as the symbolic flame burns, life and hope will remain in the world. As it is the eternal flame, it also represents tradition, continuity, the perseverance in a harsh world. This dual nature of perseverance and destruction an almost chaotic nature makes flame almost look like a divine thing consequently fire often symbolizes purification as it treats people or the world of sin this symbol is perhaps because fire leaves no trace of the thing it burns besides its ashes when the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah 
fell into their sinful ways. God burned them to ashes. So here, fire purified the earth and rid it of sinners, of impurity. We also see fire in its purifying form in the rituals of cremation and releasing the spirit by purifying it away from the body in various religions. But if there is one religion where fire has a rule beyond any other, it would be Zoroastrianism. In it, fire is seen as the supreme symbol of purity and sacred fires are maintained in fire temples. These fires represent the light of their god as well as the illuminated mind and are never extinguished as they are a symbol of an eternal flame. Of course another aspect of fire and the divine is that it is part of the natural cycle. For example in the Norse mythology we have Ragnarok where the fire giant Sutur is involved in the destruction of the world in order that it will be birthed again afterwards. Similarly, when a fire burns from a forest, the old growth in the forest burns away to allow space for the new forest to emerge from beneath. Just like fire burns down a forest and that it may regrow again, so is fire connected to a cycle of rebirth and resurrection. The returning and cyclical nature of fire is ever present, for fire has the ability to be reignited and return from just an ember. As regards this aspect of fire, the phoenix best represents the role of fire as a symbol of rebirth. First, the mythological bird dies by spontaneous combustion. It bursts into flames and disintegrates into ashes. Then. Finally, a new phoenix is born from the ashes to live its life again. Fire also symbolizes hope and protection. As fire scares away predators, it gives light. Fire is warmth and its sight may signify refuge from the cold outside. And a fire on the horizon can symbolize a safe haven where travelers can rest, as it symbolizes civilization and protection from the wild. Combined with fire's association with chaos and a certain type of freedom, it is also why the Statue of Liberty is holding a protective flame of liberty in the form of an eternal flame, signifying liberty and hope for freedom. But fire can also signify a lot of evil things, like the fires of war. War is often likened to a flame that consumes and destroys. But other evil and destructive things such as poison and disease are also associated with fire. As the jinn who God created from fire are associated with it. And the jinn we created before from the fire of Simum. Simum is a type of scorching hot wind that is associated with disease and poison, especially poison as the root of the word Simum comes from the same root as poison, Sam. And the jinn are kind of the demons of Islam. Iblis or Shaitan is from among the jinn. So they are essentially devils. Oh yes, and before we go on, I would just say that not every jinn is evil. Though the jinn that did fall are evil. So it's just Iblis that is giving us a bad name. Due to the fact he couldn't bother to kneel in front of a human. Alalakai, lastoman, yes, you do. Anana, where is me yet? You do. Anyway, it's just some jinn that are considered to be devils. 
Nej, men något av Fallen Gin. Or am I? And speaking about devils, hell in the Abrahamic tradition is a landscape of fire. This is true in the Bible and in the Quran. Oh, even before Christian beliefs, there seem to exist concepts about a fiery afterlife, where evil spirits were punished. For example, Plato in Gorgias, written in the 4th century BC, wrote of a lake of fire in which evil spirits burned. Similarly, the Egyptian Book of the Dead in the 13th century BC spoke of a lake of fire awaiting those that had done wrong. Fire is here a symbol of fear, of punishment. Fire is a symbol of torture, as fire has been used as an instrument of torture through history, and as a tool to scare animals and to use in war to cause fear, and burning down the fields and houses of the enemy. Thus, fire has this aspect of terror to it. As you can see, f fire can have a lot of meanings depending upon context and culture. And like all symbolism, it is much greater than what I have presented here. But I hope that you liked this short video about fire. And please, remember to like the video and subscribe.